In this video, we review root factoring of quadratics. Now, I'll just remind us of what this actually means at the, in the top left-hand corner here. If y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, some parabola, cuts the x-axis twice at x equals to p and x equals to q, then we can write the parabola's equation as y equals to a times x minus p times x minus q. If, on the other hand, if it cuts the x-axis once at, say, x equals to p, then we can write the parabola's equation as y equals to a times x minus p squared. Now, that's just a very quick review of the, I want to say, theory there. But now let's go right ahead and see how we can use this. We have a series of sketches here, and here I've got exercise 1, which corresponds to exercise 1 here at the top. And we're told that this parabola can be written as y equals to 2 times x minus p times x minus q. And we're asked to find the values of p and q. Well, all we need to do to answer this type of question is use the fact that this parabola cuts the x-axis at both 1 and 4, those two values. And quite simply, what root factoring allows us to state is that, if I write solution here, y equals to 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 4. So, just to clarify, I'm getting this value 1 here from this first x-intercept and the value 4 here from the second x-intercept. Therefore, I can finally answer this question by stating that p equals to 1 and q equals to 4. And we're done. Let's look at the second example. We're shown the parabola here on the right-hand side, and we're told that this parabola can be written as 3 times x minus p squared, and we're asked to find the value of p. Well, in this case, we're going to use the fact that this parabola cuts the x-axis in one point, and that point, or that value of x, is 2, as I've just underlined here in red. Therefore, I can go ahead and say, solution, y is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared. Just to clarify, I'm getting this value 2 from the x-intercept 2 here. And so we can just go ahead and state that p is equal to 2. And we're done. Let's look at one more example. Here we have a parabola. We can see in this case it's concave down. And we're told in this example Given the parabola can be written as negative x plus p times x minus q, find the values of p and q. Well, in this case, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the fact that it's a plus p here. Now, let's see why that is. Looking at this function's x-intercepts, I can see that it cuts the x-axis at x equals to negative 2 and x equals to 5. So, using what we know, we can go ahead and state that y must equal to negative x minus, careful, it's negative 2, times x minus 5. In other words, we're always subtracting the value of the x-intercept. Here I've said x minus negative 2 because the x-intercept is negative 2. And here it's minus 5 because the x-intercept is 5. Now, if I simplify this a bit, Remembering that when I subtract a negative, it turns into a positive. This turns into y equals to negative x plus 2 times x minus 5. And now I can see why we had a plus sign in the question. Remember, we had a plus here, and we now have a plus there. So we can go ahead and state that p is equal to 2 and q is equal to 5. And there we go.